we are joined by energy activist Peter Becker to get reaction on the complaint by the electricity minister over delays in the refurbishment um, of the Kuburg nuclear power station in Cape Town. Um, Thank you so much for joining us, Peter, this afternoon. Of course, a lot to discuss here, but I think the very important question here that every South African would want to know or would be concerned about is, what does this exactly mean for load shedding? Mm. Yes, and uh, uh, good to be with you. And I think the crucial question here is, why were these units taken offline in the first place? We know that we're in the absolute peak of our crisis of load shedding and we need every megawatt we can possibly get to be online. And yet ESCOM made the decision to take these two units offline. Initially, we, uh, we were told five months. Uh, I think everyone thought that was wildly optimistic. And it looks like it's at least 10 months or more per unit, maybe 14 or more months per unit that will be offline. And that comes with a tremendous cost to the economy at the moment. And all of this is being done in order to have the plants available after 2026, when most people agree the load shedding crisis is going to be over. So I think I share his concerns that we should really be finding out what's going on at Kuburg and there should be far more transparency from ESCOM. Mm. And, and why is there this lack of transparency then at Kuburg? Is there something, you know, that's, that's actually very seriously wrong that they don't want to, you know, let the nation know about? Or is there... Is it something that can be fixed and they just don't know a time frame? Well, I think, uh, you know, that saying it's easier to ask forgiveness than for permission. So perhaps the idea is just to spend as much money as, as is needed and then to let the public know, oops, we went over budget. But I think that's highly irresponsible. And let's just put it in context a little bit. You know, the, the Kuburg refurbishment is an incredibly complicated thing to do just from an engineering point of view. Those steam generators that need to be replaced weigh over 400 tons. So that's a very, very uh, heavy lift to do. It needs a specialized crane and so on. And that has to be done six times per unit or 12 times for the whole refurbishment to take three out and put three back in on each unit. Also, the, the plant is very close to the sea and we all know what the sea air does to rebar and to concrete and so on. So as they are going through their process, they're finding parts that are needing replacement that they didn't think needed replacement. Um, and also there's unfortunately a habit of secrecy around the whole nuclear industry in this country. It started in South Africa to enable, um, for military purposes, to enable an atomic bomb to be made. Uh, subsequently that's been abandoned, but it still unfortunately seems to have a hangover that the public are not allowed to know what's going on at Kuburg. Mm. Interesting, you know, that, that last point that you mentioned, but let's, let's, you know, touch a little bit more on the desirability and maybe the need for um, nuclear here in South Africa. Your opinion on that? So Kuburg produces somewhere 4 or 5% of our uh, electricity, uh, depending on what else is running at the time and, and how you measure it. And if you look at that, it's really quite a small piece in the whole picture of the country. We know that we need to retire up to 30 gigawatts of coal over the next coming decades. So the contribution that Kuburg makes is really not that relevant. We also know that the uh, global trend is a move towards renewable energy. Uh, solar and wind constantly are getting cheaper and cheaper as, con as economies of scale ramp up and as that technology is more and more widely used. And in contrast, nuclear power is constantly getting more expensive. So the thought of building a new plant, I think, is outside of the realm of possibility. We'd need to find a trillion rand or so to finance that. There's also talk about uh, small modular reactors. They're more than a decade away, I'd estimate, so I don't think that's practical. The only issue we've got really to decide on is the Kuburg plant. Do we need it? And is it worth the cost? But unfortunately, we don't know what the cost is. So ESCOM last estimated that to be uh, 20 billion rand in 2010. But we know the exchange rate has changed. We know that the inflation has happened since then. And we know that the work is not taking five months a unit, but maybe three times that length. So we don't know what that cost is. It could be as high as 100 billion rand. It could be higher. So we really need transparency about that. So we can look at, is this the best way to be spending money? We know ESCOM needs to uh, reinforce the grid to allow new capacity to come online. So maybe it would be a better way to spend all that money on that rather than trying to get this very old plant back into a state where mm. it can operate for just another 20 years.
Very important, you know, the, the cost factor here um, at Kruberg, you know, is it costing, you know, South Africans also um, way more than what it should to keep the plants alive. But uh, let, let me talk about, you mentioned 2026, of course, when load shedding should be, you know, a thing of the past. So that's the ideal um, year or date that's being set. But of course, we know that South Africa is busy with its very own just energy transition. Uh, we know that other governments from European countries like Germany are also involved in, in, in you know, our transition to renewable energies. But do you think we are on track and can we, you know, meet our deadline? So when I say 2026, that's quite a pessimistic view. I think some of the wildly optimistic views we've heard is that by the end of 2023, we're going to end load shedding. I think that's a bit impractical, um, but I think it's realistic to say by 2026, we should be back uh, to have a healthy reserve margin. So a reserve margin is the percentage that we are above what our demand is. At the moment, we have a, a negative reserve margin. And unfortunately, there's been a long history of obstructionism to allow the rollout of renewables. And there's a whole complex web of reasons about that. Obviously, there's a lot of money involved in coal mining and particularly in delivery of coal and all the corruption that's coming to light around that. So unfortunately, uh, there's been that history of, of um, blocking renewables. If that had been lifted three years ago, we wouldn't have any load shedding now or maybe a very, very small amount. And unfortunately, our Minister for Energy, uh, Minister Mantashe, seems to be believing that renewables don't work. So there's a bit of a conflict going on in government at the moment, that there are different opinions about what the right solution is. And unfortunately, that leads to inaction. And what the solution is not is to try and get the coal plant back to 80% operational um, energy availability factor, because that's simply not going to happen. Mm. And, and do you think, you know, this, um, you know, butting of heads uh, between or we, we alleged butting of heads, especially with the minister that you just mentioned, of course, Gwede Mantashe, energy minister, and then Jose Enzo Ramachopa, do you think they're on the same page when it comes to the energy crisis in the country? Or is it, is it maybe I misunderstood you there? Oh, I think we might have lost um, Peter there. Uh, unfortunately, you know, it is uh, load shedding will still be a thing. Like, like you said, it will be something that we will be dealing with as South Africans for maybe a lot longer than expected. Um, but hopefully that it can be resolved very, very soon. Of course, we know that Electricity Minister Jose Enzo Ramachopa has slammed the delays and refurbishment at the Kuburg nuclear power station. And there's many factors involved here um, and, and that contribute to this this issue um, that we would also really like to find out very soon as to what exactly the main cause is behind this.